Okay, hello everyone. I uh, hope the sound is okay. Can you uh, uh, show in the chat if you hear me? Okay, so uh, how is the sound? Any comments on the sound here? Very good. Okay, I'll get started. Um, so today I'm going to be watching the 23rd Nongxing Cup, the round 11 with everyone here. And this is the second time they do it because they actually played the 11th round yesterday. And there was a mishap, you might say. There was a problem because... Uh, let's just take you to the, the final position here. Um, so this is what it looked like at the end of the game when it was Miyu Ting's turn to play. And so um, he had white um, right here on, on the... You can see in the video that I've labeled him as white. I don't actually know which color the players will be playing in today's game. But yesterday Miyu Ting had white and it was his turn. You might assume that he's going to save those two stones, but actually it's a very interesting position um, because if white plays here, it's going to be bad news. So I'll go into that later after I, as I finish my commentary of this game. Um, actually, white was going to probably play here and black could take here, white could take here. This would um, save these white stones and kill this black group. And meanwhile, black will be um, trashing white's territory on the left and will play here and have this huge attack on white in the upper right part of the board. And I think there was a computer program that was saying black is winning by half a point or something. Uh, but they're, at this point, they're sort of fighting a life or death battle. And so for human players, I don't think that half point, I would, frankly, I'd say it doesn't mean anything to us, even players at this level. So, oh, hello, spl Split End. Um, uh, so, yes, and as Split End is saying here in the Japanese comment, uh, the game today is going to start at 2 o'clock, but I'm starting early so I can show you the game they played yesterday. So, Kino no go yarimasne, Split End san. Tuyukoto de. So, I'll start. Um, so, that's what happened. Um, and later on, I'll see what would have happened if black, if white had escaped with those stones. But let's, um, we have half an hour before the game starts. So let's just go through it from the beginning. So that was actually an opening position that I was showing you before I got started. So let's start with the empty board. And yes, to talk about that, let's just go back to that position and talk about the mishap that happened. So um, it was like this, and muting um ran out of time and so he claimed that he had tried to click on the board and um it did not register so apparently it was a malfunction of the mouse or the computer something like that and um they decided that um they would have to replay the game and this is something that actually happened two years ago um let's see i, I lost the comment but Someone was uh, making note of that. It happened two years ago in the same tournament, and it was um, for China. It was Fan Tingyu, and it was Park Juman or Yuma. I don't really know how to pronounce his name correctly. Um, one of the strongest players in Korea. He um, and it was Park who um, whose mouse did not work, and it was exactly the same situation. And I actually looked at that video and, and Park was clicking on the on the screen and nothing was happening and then he looked away from the board and he was looking sort of bewildered and confused and they decided that it was going to be a they, they had to replay the game that time also and the officials would were saying that they were going to change the rules and make them more strict and they were not going to let this happen again but and, and they said that this time too so so let's hope that something 
hope that the rules get better. I think the only thing to do in these cases is to, um, if they're going to make the rules stricter, they will probably make them stricter and they say that it's the player's responsibility. Um, but I don't know. It's, um, it's a tough decision. But in this case, anyway, um, the, exactly the same thing happened two years ago. In that case, it was a Korean player whose mouse stopped functioning. And it was um, that was also a, a game between China and Korea. So this time it was a Chinese player who's um, apparently his mouse malfunctioned or the connection to the commu computer. Something went wrong with the equipment and he couldn't play his move. So they're replaying the game today. Okay, so um, we'll go back to the beginning of the game. And let's see. Okay, so attaching against the Shimari here. So I have about 20 more minutes, so I can I can give you a kind of a little review of the game here. Oh, Nie Blarix is asking how many players for each team. That's a good question. Um, China has Miyu Ting and KJ, so that's two Chinese players. Japan now has um, Ichiriki Ryo, so that's a big name, and they also have Yoseki, who's actually in very good form recently. Um, and Korea just has Shin Jin So, so he's sort of um, up against the wall, but he is a very successful player. So um, in the past, he has been known to beat something like, um, I think it was three Chinese players and just one, uh, just Shin Jin So in one tournament that I remember from recent years in which he beat everyone and, and won the tournament. Um, so he's he's a formidable player. He's probably I'd, I'd call him my favorite. Um, so it's conceivable that he'll beat everyone. So attaching against the Sumari like this against Black's corner enclosure, and when Black plays a honey on top, White plays a honey underneath. So if you um, take a look at my um, my channel, actually, those of you who aren't um, signed up to it already, you should subscribe because I actually did a video about this very situation where black has played i'm just giving you a link here for my channel uh that's my youtube channel that is so um i did a video about this joseki and the joseki where black plays um underneath in a section called the ai josekis because it's a joseki that we started playing because of um use of AIs. So when white plays a honey underneath and black connects um, and white extends, this is pretty much fixed. Like it's a, you could almost call it a forced sequence. Um, and when black plays here, this is where white has two choices really. Actually, the more popular move, the more common move. Oh, go badu kuwaiti. Thank you very much for the, for the gift. I can get some coffee with that. So with this move, this is actually the more popular Joseki. And black ignores the threat. When white plays at three, white is threatening to capture a black stone on the side there. Black ignores that because this capture is big also. And it turns into a trade here. And this is actually, um, I've, I've talked about this one and I've shown it in some of my games. I think one or two of my games. And it's sort of tricky because both sides are, no one's going to give give in in this code. So like white's never going to connect it. Uh, black's never going to connect it O2. And the players, since it's not really a direct code that's immediately going to kill the corner, the code lasts for a long time. So it's going to, in some cases, it's going to last throughout the game. And it's very difficult to evaluate this. So sometimes if white has a lot of, lot of code threats, white will be able to cut it O2. Or sometimes black will capture it Q3 and then cut again. Um, so capture here and then cut again at R2. So there's um, sometimes the corner dies. Sometimes white wins the cone, gets a ponuki on that side. 
and it usually takes a lot of time, so it goes in well into the game. It makes the following playing, both players will be eyeing this coal, and it makes it very complicated and difficult. So uh, when white connects here, hmm. when white connects here, um, it's something like this. If black had extended here, let's see, I'll yeah, use this. If black had extended here, white would have probably jumped. And it's sort of questionable whether black wants to play that move. When black doesn't play it, um, there is the potential pincer on the right side. So if we say white plays something like this and then plays away, um, this is actually something we saw in some of AlphaGo's games uh, that it played against itself. Sometimes black will peep here and go after white's eye. So this white group, if white plays first on the second line, white's going to be able to live. Or if black plays first, it's not going to live. So otherwise, if we go back one move and black plays here, then this white group is is not alive. So there's some cases where black can chase it from from the side like this. So black left it, and so they got to this point where white added a stone there to, to protect the group on the side. So it's pretty straightforward at this point, and pretty even. Like. Um, I think that Black's winning rate maybe dropped just a tiny bit, but nothing that would bother a human player. And the computer, uh, my computer wanted, I was using Katago, but my computer wanted Black to invade the 3-3 point, but instead he jumps out. So this is where, if you ask my computer, this is where Black started to go go wrong a little bit. Um, but again, it's it's not a big deal for human players. But this is where he really started going on an adventure. So in the game, he plays here and here, which starts this huge fight. Um, and he probably should have played here or, or here. Just connecting would be feasible. Or he could play here and make a connection like this, which would um, make it easier for black to make some eyes on the side if, if black has to. For instance, uh, if white plays something like this, sometimes black can play something like this to just... And, and in this case, the hanging connection at three is helping to make a connection. there. So it's it's relatively easy for black to make a base on the side and probably connect up to the right in most cases. So this would have been relatively even. And once black starts this, his score given by my computer starts to go down and he pushes here. So this starts a huge fight. It would have been relatively calm if black had... Um, secured the connection here, after which, uh, like this, and I don't think this white group is going to die actually, because white has a forcing move here, and should be okay. So um, maybe he, he didn't like that and played here, but this is starting a huge fight here, where white cuts black off, And it's a kind of a race to capture. But black has an insecure position out towards the center. So when black cuts here, black can live in the corner with this sequence. So black's, for the time being, black is alive. But now black um, starts into a semi -I, um And it's like this. So the local semi -I is pretty tricky. So let's take a look at the local semi here, where black has played. Okay, they played this first. So for the time being, we're just to ignore that stuff that's happening in the center. The center is actually pretty imp important, but um, I'm going to explain that. I'm I'm going to explain that later. <laughs> so first, we'll we'll figure out what's happening here in the corner, and what's happening here is that white has. If black plays here, white plays here, black plays here, white has four liberties, black has four liberties, white's going to play here and win the race to capture. So in the game, black plays here, and although it's now five liberties for white and five liberties for black, you would assume that um, white's going to win by a move. Um, and if white plays here, White does have an extra liberty. For the time being, Black's probably going to sacrifice 
for the time being. That black has to deal with the outside. But if white leaves it like this, black can actually locally can win the semi. So black can throw in here. White's probably going to take it. It's going to be a kind of a co actually. And black, in this variation, white is. White would normally be one move ahead. So let's do that first. If black just fills liberties here. Normally white is winning by one move. So white wins by one move. But since black has some extra liberties. Black can extend here. And put white into some a shortage of liberties there. So because of that. White cannot fill the liberty. So if white continues filling liberties here. Uh, not that way, sorry. <laughs> if white continues filling liberties here, black can push out here and win by one move because white has to back up once. So that was the idea uh, with black. Um, in order for that to work, black had to play the solidus connection. So just to back up a little bit and clarify what I'm talking about here. If black had played this way, usually you want to fill your opponent's liberties in a race to capture. So usually... Um, black wants to play here, but in this case, black wouldn't have time to do that trick where black forced white into a shortage of liberties, because any time black plays here, white can just start filling. So even if black plays like this, it's still the same thing. Um, if black plays from this side, white can connect on this side, and black loses both of white's groups on the outside, both this group and this group, have three liberties. So white's winning by one move. Or if black plays on this side, um, it doesn't really help. Black, white will just push from this side. And same, same thing. So black can't win. Because black played at one and filled one liberty, black didn't have time to make use of this, um, of this move pushing out here. So there wasn't time for black to play that. So that explains that explains this move to me. Um, in which case, if white does go after the black group, there's enough liberties for black to be pushing out here at one time. Although black will be starting by reinforcing the outside group. Um, the very fact that white will need one more move locally to finish off those black zones, it, it gives black an extra tempo. And this would be okay for black. This would be okay. However, um, when black connects here, uh, the re the fact that it gave white five liberties, this is actually bad news for the black group on the outside. So white has five liberties and white plays here. Um, and so this is where it's starting to look really, really bad for... So there was some miscalculation. Shinjin so had some... It's very unusual to see him getting into trouble like this. Um, but he's in trouble now. White just pushes all the way. He must have um, overlooked this variation. And already you can see... Okay, just go back. Okay, back, back. Yeah, I got a bit hasty there. So um, if black plays something like that and white plays here, white, uh, white has five liberties on the lower side. So it's a, it's a race between this white group and the, and the black group. White has five liberties and black has only four. And so this is bad news. And so if black even manages to do something crazy on the first and second lines towards the left side, it's going to be really painful. And we have to remember that now that white is reinforced on this side, at any point if white plays this honey in the corner, white's going to be able to capture the corner group anyway. So it's very, very painful for black. So what did he do about it? So um, he cut here. And this is already a very desperate fight for Black, but Black is trying to make something out of it. Um, he's always losing by one move against this white group on the lower side. He's still one move behind. So if Black started filling liberties of this group, White would win by one move. And let's see. So so he's starting this stuff on the outside. It's not really working. Um, in fact, I think Miu Ting had a variation where he could have actually captured the whole thing. So at this point, um, the, the game move was this one. This actually makes it possible for Black to complicate matters a bit when Black plays here. So um, 
my computer was suggesting that white should connect here. And there's a big difference there when black starts to play moves like this, which are, um, this move, it helps black by reinforcing these stones and black is aiming at finally to, to escape here, which can potentially cause some trouble for white. So black does need to reinforce these stones that I've marked on the left here a little bit before black does that. So that what what black was doing with this curling around move at two in the actual game. But in this case, when white has solidly connected, um, black white can play a hana here. And this fills, um, the moment white had played the hana, black only had three liberties. So nothing was gonna happen on the outside. So for instance, if black plays here, white can play something like this. With only three liberties, black's not gonna accomplish anything here. So, um, so maybe black's gonna push through. In this case where black takes a stone here, it's very helpful that white has that solid connection there. So white would continue by filling liberty and eventually this is gonna be some kind of a co. So for instance, if black plays here, it's gonna be a one shot co where black has no co threat equal to the size of this co and white's gonna capture all of this. It's not just this one black group here. This group is gonna to die too. So it's gonna be a disaster. Even if black gets something elsewhere on the board, it's not gonna be good enough. So that probably would have been the end of the game. And in the center here, uh, again, there's there's nothing happening here. With only um, three liberties for the black group, black did not have time to do, for instance, um, to do stuff like this, which would potentially um, capture the white stones. Black didn't have time for that because black only has three liberties on the left. So black's gonna lose that race. So, um, it was, it's a bit complicated, but I'm hoping that that was a clear enough explanation of what's going on here. In the game, white played a hanging connection and black curled around. Now if white tries the same thing, it's gonna be bad because in this case, this exchange here, the exchange of the two marked stones, it's really, really bad because white wants to play at A10 and that marked exchange, by playing that exchange, white's filled his own liberty. So this would be a collapse for white. In the game, white played here. So white had to do that. And the fact that white had to run out towards the side, it did complicate things a little bit um, in this variation. Where black plays, okay, black played that. Um, and white played here, that's a clever move, but it's getting tricky. So here, when black escapes, now there's gonna be an issue in the center. Just because black has four liberties on the left here, at least four liberties. So this group has these four liberties. And it's even hard for white to fill the four liberties, but um, if white plays something like this, it means that black can get a, um, a net in the center. So that's gonna be okay for black. So white is sacrificing the four stones. And this was, uh, it's relatively close, but it's good for white. It's still bad for black. Uh, so like Leonardo de Wagner is saying, it looked terrible for black uh, a while ago. It's still bad. Uh, like this is, the computer was giving white a huge winning percentage. Uh, so the, the semi here, white's winning it. White has probably captured these stones. And so, all black got was the four white stones in the center. And on the whole, it was a bit painful for black. So white's got a solid lead here. And you know, I, I would have the impression that I would be able to beat Shinjin Shin from here. Uh, but Mutin, Mutin couldn't, so it might be wrong. <laughs> okay, so here the computer wanted white to push. And it's interesting. I learned something from this variation because it wants to play the forcing move like this instead of the move that white played was this one. If white plays here, this actually gives white a stronger connection towards the corner. So it will be more difficult for black to take advantage of any weaknesses there. Whereas when white plays here and later on black plays here, there's gonna be some issues with a peep at this point. So it's, it's actually uh, a bit too loose to connect like um, with the hanging connection. If white had played this way and used the solid connection to threaten to capture those black stones, um, it would have been an easier fight. At this point, Black's probably going to sacrifice those stones, but it's okay. 
Um, it's about time for the game to start. Um, but I don't think they've started it yet. Um, so I'll, I'll be checking that. I think it's probably okay if we um, join them a bit late because we can catch up. This game is really a fascinating game. Uh, so I, I do want to go a bit more. So uh, Shinjin so plays this. He's already challenging white. Black has a uh, bad position, so black's trying to start something. White pushes through, so now it's started. Uh, actually, Katawa wanted white to curl around and sacrifice on a small scale, so that would be something like this, where black can actually capture. If white plays um, the honey here, white black can cut here and then cut here. So that would be working for black. So um, something like this. Uh, black would be winning the race to capture. But white would be getting some squeezing done. So that, that stone at 13 is probably going to connect up to the white group on the outside. And a position like this, um, supposedly a win for white. So white could have sacrificed, but the game move works okay. So it was like this. And yes, he's playing super aggressively. There's this beautiful variation that I found with the computer. White plays here. So basically in the game, when white played here, um, it's not working so well because if white covers here, black will cut and break out. So this is easy for black to break out with. If white had jumped, let's see, where does that go? Yeah. If white had jumped, then white can stop black from doing that. So basically if black does that, white can play here and here and it's not amounting to anything. So the jump is stronger against what black's jump at uh, two, black's attachment at two. So it's going to turn into a semi-eye again, a race to capture. Black has to play a lot of painful moves here. And um, it's actually not so easy for black to win, because if black does something like this, white can play here. This is looking like a seki, actually. So the best black can do here is a seki. Um, black might try something tricky like this kind of move. Um, it's not going to be straightforward, so it's, it's going to be a tricky variation. So for instance, if this happens... Oh, sorry, no, black can't do that. Black has to connect underneath. Um, again, it's maybe maybe it's going to be a seki. It looks sort of dangerous for black, actually. Um, so it's a tough semi for black to win. If white had jumped at one, I think white would have probably won relatively easy. But of course, both players are in overtime at this point. So they make mis it's okay to make mistakes, I think. So in this variation, after escaping with the attachment on the second line, white had two points that white had to connect. So white could not connect both at the same time. And black got to cut those stones off. White's group on the side here is not alive. So white has to deal with that group and was forced to sacrifice the stones on the other side. So this is how it turned out. Okay, good. Um, let's just uh, finish this game because the other the today's game is is just starting, so I don't want to fall too far behind. Um, at this point, um, Shinjin So is just going for a lot of territory. He probably feels he's still behind. And this was well played by Miyu Ting. He's reducing the territory. And so at this point, apparently he still had a solid lead if he's, he had covered here. He curled around in the game. Shinjin so is getting into the white territory in the upper left. It's still good for white, apparently. But it's getting closer and closer. Like it was, uh, there was a point in this game where white was something like 10 points ahead. And. At this point, he's winning by something like two or three points, so something like that. Um, white finishes this off. At this point, if white, if we assume that this whole area is going to be a white territory, white seems to have a slight advantage. So, for instance, if white had played here, it would have been relatively safe. If black extends, white can play here. In this case, nothing bad is going to happen to white. Probably it would have been better to play this way. In the game, white plays on this side, which is a more secure uh, connection to
to, to these stones here. So white was making a secure direct uh, connection in that direction. Uh, black takes the profit in the corner. And then... Uh, this is the point uh, where the accident, you might say, happened. So what happens from here on is that if white plays here, this seems to be the correct move. Black will capture two stones. And you might recall up to this point, these four white stones were dead. And they were the stones that uh, connected this black group to the outside. So by capturing these two stones, white's capturing that group on the left here. This group was already dead. But um, black's going to get an attack in the center. Black has some forcing moves like moves like this or moves like this would be forcing towards white's group on the right. So black is threatening to move out with this stone here. So it gets super complicated. And that's all tangled up with the idea that now white has to live with these stones. Uh, will white be able to live with... White probably will be able to live with those stones, but it does. It's it is going to sort of tangle up with this idea. And when when Katago was telling me that Black's one half point ahead, um, I just don't know what it's talking about. Basically, it's 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 hard for me to comprehend um, how this is a half point difference when it looks like when it's hard to tell whether all the groups are alive even. So this would have been. Um, how they were supposed to continue. Otherwise, like it's an Atari, so you might say, why doesn't white just save those stones? And I made a variation, since this was the end of the game, I decided to make a variation. Um, black shouldn't play that move, it's, it's bad in some cases, but I made the variation here anyway. So when black cuts here and white extends, when white extends, black will get an Atari here and here. And then black can play here. So this is trouble for white. So there's various ways it can continue. But uh, first of all, if white just connects here, black's going to connect up in the center. And you can see that white stones are getting short of liberty. So white has to escape in this direction. And black connects up in the center, thrashing the whole white territory. White needs one more move here, so white would uh, capture something. And then black could continue surrounding this area. So this would be a win for black. Um, yeah, something like this. So this is actually a, a solid win for black. Otherwise, going back to the turning point here, um, if white plays an Atari at two stones now, black's going to capture here. White takes the two stones. Uh, Gavin Rooney, thank you very much. Gavin Rooney from Ireland. So at this point, black can connect here. And it turns into a race to capture between these black stones and the white group in the center, which has only one eye. And so white has actually only a few liberties. So if, black, if white starts filling the liberties of this black group, black can immediately fill white's liberty here and will win by one move. So that doesn't work for white. So actually, white will play an Atari here. Black cannot connect here because this isn't a forcing move. It's an Atari, and white can escape. So black can't connect there, but black will play a co here, and black actually has an advantage in co-threats. So this would be, it would be really bad. Okay, Go Baduk is saying that a 0 0.5 difference could just mean it's a 50-50 chance for either player to win by 20 points. And yes, it's the average result, I think, of various play, uh, large number of playouts. And so they, they're not necessarily half a point for one side and half a point for another side. They could be larger differences. So that could be true. So when white plays the co here, black has a co threat here, which threatens if white captures, black can live on the side, capturing some white stones on the side. Um, and probably going to save these black stones on the outside. It's sort of a co like situation. But in any case, this is good for black. If white answers here, white does have some co-threats. White has some local co-threats that are sort of um, bad moves, but white does have these local co-threats. So that's a kind of a drastic local co-threat. And in this case, black can just capture. Uh, you might notice that 
capturing these stones will uh, capture these white stones also. So if black um, uses this close red and captures these stones, the whole lower left corner is going to be a huge black territory. Uh, otherwise, if white answers it, Um, white did have one more quote threat, but again, black has another quote threat here. White actually has a final quote threat here. Um, so it's a, a pretty close thing. White does have one more quote threat. Um, but eventually, black's going to use this quote threat on the side. And it ends up being a, a win for black anyway. So something like this is the uh, variation I researched. Um, you can see all of the black stones eventually linked up on the side. And black has reduced the whole center white territory. And all white got was two eyes in the center of the board. So that was uh, that was pretty hideous for white. So basically, if white... Uh, let's go back to the game. So it was at this point where white probably should have just backed off here and white still had a solid lead. But after this, when this happens, um, if white plays... Okay. Uh, so, my computer is telling me that I was disconnected for a moment. I hope everyone's okay there. Uh, just, um, you didn't notice it. That's good. Uh, so just tell me in the chat if, if everything's okay there. Uh, it could have just been YouTube. It says it's excellent connection anyway. Right now it says it's an excellent connection. So I don't know what would have happened in this variation. Um, but this is probably the way they would go. Because if white does this one, um, as I just showed you, it's going to be bad. It's going to be super complicated, but this was within the... Um, uh, it's, a, it's something that the players probably were able to work out as they played. So I'm going to leave the first game here. Um... We are starting with the second game already, so uh, it's about time for me to get on and start with today's game. Okay, so let's get rid of, let's see, let's get rid of that. And that's the wrong game, so just let me adjust here for a bit. Okay, that looks better. So this is today's game, and let's see, it looks like Miyuting is black, so um, I'll just replay it for a bit now, while I correct uh, correct this thing here. So Miyuting has black. Let's just... Okay, that's better. Okay, this shape on in the lower left is pretty un, it's very unusual. I have, I'm seeing it for the first time. Okay, we get to see the um, stone pillar squeeze. Ah, jumped ahead. Okay. So this is the stone pillar tesuji, where black, um, extends to the first line here, and squeezes like this. 
and white plate there. But um, people say that this position, this shape here, um, looks like a stone pillar, which is the traditional shape for Japanese tombstones. So sometimes call it, it's called the tombstone tetsuji. And if white connects all the way, black's going to play here. Black wins this race to capture by one move. So that's three three liberties for two liberties. So that explains, uh, let's just get back to the game. That explains white, okay, white, white connected to the side. So black is going to be able to capture the two stones and save those stones on the side. Let's just quickly go through the moves up to this point. Um, I don't really have a lot to say. Um, black plays, uh, this tight shimari um, has lost its, um, has lost its popularity after uh, eight, we have AIs that don't like this move so much, but it still can be played. And for modern players, I think it it's interesting that now they just ignore the shoulder hit. So if black plays something like uh, this or this, quite often the computer will consider this a profitable exchange for white, and white just plays away um, somewhere, and white will already have a good score. And so what's happening here is that at some point white is thinking of playing an attachment here and it sort of works well for white. This is actually something that when I was studying with Go Sagan, um, he already had this one worked out. And he was the only person who talked about this kind of thing. He really liked to play the same point, the marked stone, the stone, the shoulder hit there. He liked to play that move. He also liked to play a two space approach move against the three four point at the same point so that was a point on the board you might say that he um he liked to play and he was one of the greatest players in the 21st century so he already had that one there are some similarities between his playing style and the moves that um, ais are showing us so some people say that um somehow he must have been incorporated into alphago so back to the game what black plays a Kakari. And this Hasami, this pincer, is one of the pincers where white can push through and cut when black plays here. And this is close enough to an even result. Usually, okay, Leonardo is asking why it's uh, profitable for white when black plays here. And like, we didn't, we didn't have this idea for centuries. Oh, sorry. Uh, the most honest answer to that, the frank answer is that no one knows. So, uh, why is it a profitable, um, it, there is potential for white to give black an over-concentrated shape sometimes, but the way it actually works in actual games, um, it's really hard to understand for, for professional players also. And it's why people resisted Gosegan's idea that it was good. He, he said it was a good move. He understood it, apparently. And people had trouble following that. I think it's only now that we have computer programs that are actually showing us more variations and um, more detail um, that we're starting to be able to use this kind of move. So it's very hard to explain because I think that um, most professionals, including myself, do not fully understand yet. We just know that the computer gives us a, a good... Um, good score and from black's point of view the computer gives you a relatively bad score when you answer that move and so you're seeing people playing away and it's, it's um subtle enough that we don't really notice it which means that if you like to it's a yeah yeah that's uh tsl uh tls that is TL, um thomas leonard Su. it's an extreme form of sabaki um which is hard for most human players to understand so getting back to this joseki, um, when this is actually a, a shape, a, a sequence that has been played um, for several decades at least. So white plays the um, the tight pincer, black plays presses at um, its d15 on this system, and and then white pushes through and cuts. Black has to play the hanging connection, and usually white is going to play here. So this is the usual move. Uh, or um, earlier, early in the 
21st century, white was always playing here. Nowadays, people tend to play here. And black could add a stone to that, and then white would probably be playing something like this. So this was conceivable. In the game, white was a bit more, you might say white was more greedy or more adventurous, playing high on the fifth line. So it's the first time I've seen that. Um, taking more space, but I, it's just the first time I've seen this. So basically white has more space on the left side, but it's not so secure. So compared, compared to the uh, position where white has played here, it's not quite as secure. And that's, that sort of follows into what we saw today. I mean, in the actual game, when black slided here, and was aiming at this move. So with this move, it would be relatively easy for white to capture the cutting stone. For instance, if white played, if white had played here, I sort of doubt that black would actually try to save that one stone. Uh, but black could maybe play something like, let's see, where shall I play with black? Maybe black will play here and things like this. Just because if black tries to save the cutting stone, this will be very bad shape for black. And white has a number of ways to probably kill this black group. So let's see. For instance, even if white plays like this. Um, if black fills liberties, then white's going to win by one move. I think these two players have a tendency to create uh, races to capture. They like to play semi eyes So this one was relatively easy. White wins by one move. You can count three liberties for black and white has four liberties on the outside. So it's the outside liberties that count um, because black has an eye and white does not. So white's gonna have to fill this one, but still wins by one move. And if you want elementary um, video about uh, semi eyes, a basic video about semi eyes. I did make one in my channel, so you can go to my channel in YouTube and go searching for that. Um, I did one about big eyes and small eyes, also, which has to do with semi eyes. So, white plays here. Um, this is a relatively loose move uh, as far as the race to capture is concerned, but it's refusing to allow black into the rest of the white side. So, black plays here. This is the Tesuji and creates the um, the tombstone tesuji, as I sometimes call it, but it's also called the stone pillar. And white didn't, okay, white didn't connect underneath. So that actually comes as a bit of a surprise, because I would have expected white to connect underneath here, and then black would be able to capture here. So that's what I sort of expected to happen. Instead, white played away, so white ignored it, and black gets to capture the whole thing. So the whole corner there has become a black territory. White got two big points in return. So let's see. Uh, I'm almost cut up, caught up. Let's just show you the final three moves here. So black played an attachment here and the double honey. So this is a... Oh, white played a double honey too. So this was a standard way for black to try to make two eyes and white has played one of the more this move was around probably over a hundred years but it wasn't as popular as for instance this joseki in general it wasn't as popular as this in this case black would not connect on the th second line would probably live in the corner like this sacrificing the one stone and you can see white's sort of over concentrated there so that was the idea for black Or if white connects here, uh, this is going to be easy for black to live. So in modern times with computers, whereas people would favor moves like this and like this before we had um, neural network systems to um, learn from, computer programs tend to like this one or this one, even in wide open opening positions. And so it's become a more common move. So back to the game. Yeah, they're playing fairly quickly. Um, black kicks from this side. 
So it's interesting that black is playing from the opposite side here. Um, usually a common idea would be to try to get some extra space here, playing from this side and this. But um, actually this kind of, this way of making a life, it's going to be fairly painful. So um, later on, black's going to be forced to be playing moves like this. Black's losing the whole territory on the on the left here. So it's usually not so good. So black is making use of the fact that white has played this double hane and has a weakness towards the right side, so towards the upper side. So for instance, when black plays here, and if we assume that white's going to try very hard to kill the black group, so let's have white do something like this. When these black root stones die, let's say, say they die, die with the sequence something like this, uh, black can still make use of them by playing forcing moves from this side, or maybe even just pushing through here and making trouble like this. So um, there's various potential for black to make trouble for white with sequences like this, where black is getting something on the outside. Just as a kind of an example of how um, black is making the potential cut at 10 um, a threat by um, reducing the size of the whole area there. And the fact that black has that cut at at, um, at Q16 makes it possible for black to sudden, suddenly black has sort of changed tactics here and is starting to surround the lower side. And maybe black's going to give up these three stones that black has inside white's position there because black can in some cases. So again, to show you this variation, in some cases black can uh, play that cut here. So um, even if black just did it like this, um, black would be getting something towards the right side. So that's the general idea here. It, in some cases, it's more beneficial to sacrifice those stones and get something, getting something on both sides can be better than actually saving them. Okay, today I've been... Um, I've been sort of busy doing various things like showing you yesterday's game and catching up today. And so let's see if I am missing any important things. Oh, so it's sort of similar to what I was showing you just now. It's the same Tesuji. So that's nice. It's nice that they uh, muting heard me or something. Maybe that's why they um, messed up the game yesterday because they didn't have me to comment. Okay, so if white extends here, looks like black is setting up to push through here and push through like this with uh, the cut on the left. So this would be good for black. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leonardo was asking a question about um, question about the previous variation, which was um, this one. Yeah, let, let's do that one. So in the variation, this was kind of, it, it wasn't necessarily a correct order of moves. As you see, the players played it slightly different. Um, in this variation, Black would not really do much to... Um, so Leonardo was asking about, for instance, a move like this. At F13, I believe. Um, black wouldn't prioritize that. Uh, so the other suggestion was Q14, which is um, Q13 probably. And it, it's, a, it, it's a better looking move. So this is the kind of thing Black might be thinking of doing to answer that question. Okay, so white extended, black cut, and white played a honey underneath. White's going to be able to live here. So if black connects here, white's going to extend. Looks like white has enough room to live. Extending it too is a, a very big move also. So black, um, I don't really see that this is working so well for black. So black connects. Obviously white will be extending. Uh, 
Um, I understand. I, I like the comment by Thomas Leonard Su about he thinks that Xin Jinzhou has some kind of a targeted, some kind of targeted strategies against different opponents. So I think he is very good at seeing weaknesses in his opponents. So um, I see it's most evident, I believe, when 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 he has a game where he's behind, like yesterday's game, where um, it looks pretty hopeful, hopeless, and. He suddenly he finds way to encourage his opponent to make mistakes is, is how I would put it and and he he's very good at doing that and so um, he he kind of have a, has a nose for those weaknesses that some that people have so so how they're going to make a mistake um, which works best when he's sort of in trouble when he's having a, a bad day so that's how he makes all these saves of games that were not looking so good. So I believe white's going to live on the side, and we have to remember black has to capture that white stone in the center at some point. So, for instance, a straightforward move would be cap clasping the one stone. Um, if black does that, white has to add a stone to the lower side. So white would be playing maybe this one, or could play here. Um, probably... One of one of these three moves, they they all look have their strength and weaknesses. Uh, for territory, this is the strongest, but th this one leaves some potential towards the center, so it's probably better. Otherwise, if white leaves it, black will be able to kill a white group with something like this. So this would just be. It looks like it would just be dead. So even if black does uh, does this, the corner is solid enough that black doesn't have to answer it. So black can play on this side. So nothing's happening there. And this, this lower side uh, is a very common dead shape where if white plays on this side, black gets a cut on this side. Or if white plays on this side, black gets a cut on this side. So there's no way for white to make two eyes there. So as I said, the straightforward move would be to play here. Uh, if black plays here immediately, it's probably just too dangerous because this is threatening to cover on the second line to capture two black stones. And this would be threatening to capture the four stones. And this would probably finish off black's group on the lower, lower right. So black can't afford to do that right now. Okay, so black did capture the one stone. Why O18? Why O18? Uh, good question. So that's Martin Mueller. Um, if white had simply played here, black would have played here. And uh, now if white attacks in the center, well, for the time being, it's not a big deal anyway. Uh, but black can play here and capture the stone. So black has a life on the side. That means that when black plays here, uh, sorry, when black plays here, this is a forcing move and it's forcing white to play here. And it doesn't change the status of the white group very much. So if we have a variation like this, it's still going to be forcing. And so this is slightly better for black when black later in the game will be able to play moves like this um, towards the end game. For the time being, this would solidify white, so it's not good. But black has a potential eye there, um, some territory. So it's just slightly better as far as territory is concerned, since it was forcing for black. So I agree with that move. And it's white's turn. White's going to add a stone to the side. Let's take a look at the territory. Black has a territory in the upper left, which I'll call um, somewhere around 10 points. Territory in the lower left corner, that's... Let's see. White captured two black stones. So it's close. To, it's, um, it's more than 15 points. So black has more than 15 points in the lower left, close to 10 points in the upper left, and not much else. White has less than 10 points on the lower side, and probably about 10 points in the lower right, plus a, a, an area on the right side. So that's 20 points plus the right side, and they're moving so quickly here. So black had something like 25 points, not much more. So I think uh, basically what we're seeing here is that black had to invade the left side and make a problem out of it in order to stay in the game. So 
Um, and what black does have a potential attack here to the left side. So um, that was quick, but let's just go through the moves again. So if black had played something more slow, like for instance, this would be a good point. Um, and white, white would probably find an active way to surround the lower side. So like th this would be probably a bit too slow, but white would enlarge it. And maybe if white got something like 20, 25 points on the left side, that would be a total of um, about 45 points plus the right side for white. So that's a lot of territory. I don't think black could afford to let white sort of add stones to that left side is the feeling I get. And why black jumped in here so quickly. Um, the time control in this game is one hour a piece and they have an overtime one, one time of one minute. So it's it is a relatively fast game, uh, but this is really a, it's an important point in the game and they're playing very quickly. So it's, um, that's sort of surprising. They, they're only about half an hour or 40 minutes into the game. So they're, and this is, this looks like it could easily be the decisive fight. So I would have been playing a bit slower. Mm-hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, James Sedgwick is, was giving us the fine art variation where it said that white, black should have played this exchange. And that makes sense. So before connecting it, the that stone, black should have played here. And up to this point, it would be the same. In this case, it's not as if the white group is going to die out, outright, but it's still going to be painful when black plays something like this and white eventually will have to play something like this. So that will be a bit p painful for white. And so white probably would have played here anyway. Uh, sorry, here. So the, the result towards the rest of the board would have been the same. The only difference being that black plays has got a potential little territory there of about two points, which is, it's nothing to sneeze at, I suppose. And so he has to invade the side, and they got into this huge fight. So when black pushes here, black is offering to sacrifice two stones on the left, and is hoping for kind of a squeeze. So um, that would work this way, with white playing here. Black can uh, play this one, and can play something like this. And it's still a race to capture. So um, to be safe, white would probably want to play the move here. If white plays away, uh, black can play here. This looks like it's going to be another complicated race to capture. It's going to be one move difference here. So let's assume that white doesn't want to have that happen. But then black would play a pincer here. You can see black's starting to build up a, a huge area. So that was probably black's plan. Let's see. So uh, white did cut. So maybe it's going to, something close to that's going to happen. Although um, I made it sort of I'm, I, I showed you the relatively easy to understand variation and Miyuting and Shinjin so tend to drift into the more complicated ones. So there might be a slight difference in that way. Hello, we have someone from Korea. Hello. I should learn to pronounce the Korean phonetics. Okay, they've slowed down a bit. Can black try? Yes, that is something that black can try. It will make it slightly more difficult to enclose white in the center. Um, but maybe. I don't really think that black has any chances of winning the race to capture. 
but um, if it works really well, maybe he can squeeze a little bit more. So let's let's try that in a variation. For instance, something like this. Um, it does give black some bad Aji here. So for instance, if black does this way, uh, nine would be a mistake actually, because white would be able to do stuff like this. This is just, it's probably gonna fall apart. And so, yeah, this would be trouble. Um, but black could pull back here. I guess it's going to be okay. Um, and white can play here. Uh, I don't see black has any chance to win. So if black plays here, white's connected. And if black plays here, white can wedge through here. So it's not really working so well for black. It's not as if um, anything serious is going to happen. Uh, maybe it's a slightly better for white just to play here immediately. And it's the same story. Um, so it's it's not exactly going to work for black. And black wasn't going to win that semi anyway. Um, so I, I would be okay with black um, just simply doing doing this kind of thing. If black can get sente, then if I was black and I got to play at six, I would be happy. So in this case, yes. As uh, Jack Singh is asking... In this case, black is giving up the two stones. And black can afford to do so. I think six is such a big move that this is, at least locally, it's working for black. But, you know, he, uh, yeah, he played the hunter. Yeah, that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. In fact, um, I would go as far to say that White might even be thinking of playing that move. Um, rather than this one. This might be a... This is probably a better way for White to finish off the two stones. So, um, these... The semi is clear-cut to the extent that White can play... White can choose moves that are more active. So this would be slightly more active, um, sort of in connection with an attachment here or here. There would be more Aji towards the corner if white plays at three. And whenever black plays here, white can handle it with this. Or white could even just go one step at a time and is, is still going to win the race to capture. So it's, it's no contest. So white does have a fairly strong advantage in the race to capture if white plays first at three. It's when white plays away. Okay, okay. So this is interesting. Um, he's not as interested in forcing from the outside as securing the corner. In this variation, I don't even know if Black's going to play the final move on the outside. Uh, Chris Davis is asking about domestic tournaments. Um, covering domestic Japanese tournaments is a bit tricky. Um, because of issues with the sponsors sometimes. So, so it's something I don't do very much. Great. So um, James Sedgwick tells us that um, Fine Art was suggesting B5. B5 going straight down. Now that was a move that I was thinking of. So if black had played b5, um, in this case, I think it would have been forcing. So in this case, I sort of doubt that white can play away. Um, and I think white would probably be answering this somehow. And then black could uh, maybe play some kind of a pincer. So securing the corner like this and then playing away and not bothering to surround the white group is something that uh, I find sort of conceivable because in many cases, um, for instance, if black has already played one and white two, then surrounding white with a move like this is it's not going to be forcing anymore. So this is, this is a sequence where black has gained something in the corner instead of on the outside. And um, it's something that 
is seeming to work to a certain degree. So the Hanetsugi um, is not necessarily forcing, I thought. And indeed, white did play away. And so, um, looking at the local semi, if black plays here and white plays here, uh, black's still losing here. So in this case, um, even if white just goes straight forward into a race to capture, Uh, sorry, this way. There's no way black's going to win. Or actually, black, white could probably leave it and start moving out. So it, it's not working. So the most black gets is maybe this kind of stuff. Otherwise, if black plays here, it's probably still not working. So for instance, if something like this happens, black's still losing by already by one move, and this is not forcing. So um, filling liberties... Black's going to run out of forcing moves here. So there's no way black can squeeze with Sente. Okay. They're moving ahead full speed. Um, maybe saving their time so as not to forfeit the game the next time. I, I think the officials were saying that they would be a bit more strict with the rules in the future. And they're going to be talking about um causing accidents like happened yesterday to be a, a loss automatically so maybe the players are a bit nervous about that because they are playing very quickly white extends black played here the extension uh white's making a base there so the white made a, a complete base for white's group on the top side otherwise if white had played away if white had played away where shall white play away uh, if white had played away then black could play here, and this would be starting to make an attack against the white group on the upper side. So this this makes makes sense to me. And then white jumped here. So the upper side, there's still some weakness there. For instance, if the black group on the right was completely secure, black would be able to think about moves like this. Which, of course, this is very low and unhappy shape for white. And if black plays here, it's not even alive locally. Um, but in actual play, white will push through here. And while this would work if the black group on the right was really strong, it's probably not working so well when the black group is not strong. Okay, Leonardo was asking about that ponuki I had on the left side here. So that was uh, this variation. Um, it's basically the, the side with an eye always has a, an advantage in these races to capture. So all the inside liberties become belong to white in this case. And having an eye like this does give white an advantage. So I wouldn't really call it a ponuki because it, in my definition, shapes like this, they're not a ponuki anymore with all the stones cluttered right next to them. Um, but in, in general, yes. So, um... Understanding that meaning, I, I would say, yes, the, the, the eye, the fact that it's an eye makes the difference. Okay, so black actually invaded here, and white plays here. So, just, um, I haven't made a very detailed study of, um, of, the, the territory and stuff. But just looking at the moves they're playing, I get the impression that white seems to have a slight advantage because black is playing very active and aggressive moves. So let's take a look. Let's see if I have time to do some territory. So on the lower side, if black plays on the lower side, if black plays here, we would usually count it like this, but you have to remember that if white plays here, that's threatening a cut. So black doesn't really have, like if we if we said this was all black's territory, let's see, it would be uh, 12, 14, 16, 18 points. But maybe a bit less than that. So let's call that black territory 17 points if we're calling the white territory about 8 points. So black has an advantage of um, 8 or 9 points. It, it, 9 points in the calculation I showed. And then a, a little black territory in the center here. So more than 10 points. Black has a territory in the upper left corner, which is getting close to 15 points. So, yeah, 
Counting a little for the black group in the upper right, I would say black is close to 30 points. No, that's not right. It was 18 points on the in the corner, so that's close to 40 points, is what I should say. But it's less than 40 points. So as uh, as we as we have seen that um, if white plays here, if black plays here, black will be able to reduce the white territory to a certain degree. So if white plays that point at some some later point. This is going to be about 20 points. So it's in the vicinity of 20 points. Or if black plays this point, it's looking more like 10 points. So let's say that's 15 points then. So 15 points there. Uh, the white territory in the lower right corner is probably still close to 10 points. And white's getting something close to 10 points on the upper side. So white has 35 points. And I was saying black has almost 40 points. I haven't counted this white territory on the lower side, so that's about 8 points. Oh, that's why I only had 30 points for black, because I subtracted that white territory. So if black has 40, almost 40 points, um, white has more than 40 points. So white has an advantage in territory, and black is going to start a fight here in, on the right side. And black does have some potential on the top side um, that I haven't counted into the calculation. So basically, black has to make some territory on the top side or gain something in this fight on the right side. And if I was playing, I would probably, at this point, I would feel just a little bit happier if I was playing with the white stones when compared to playing with the black stones. So I, I would say white seems to have a slight advantage, which is probably very small, but I have a feeling that it's a slight advantage for white. Right. Um, so yes, Rick Rubenstein, that's correct. Black had slightly over 40. Um, when I just counted, I counted something like 17, 18 points for black in the lower left corner, more than 10 points in the upper right corner. So that was 30 points already. And then I was counting some, some extra territory for the upper right, black in the center area on the lower side and stuff like that. So black has close to 40 points. Um, in that case, I have to count the lower side for white. That's eight or nine points there. White has about 10 points on the lower right corner. And upper right, about 10 points. So that's close to 30 points already. And white's left side, I calculated at 15 points. So white has more like 45 points. So I think white has a slight advantage in territory. Yeah. Oh, 65% for white. That's That's... Um, so that's good. I, I was pretty much on the, on the button there and it's going to be very close. 65% is, is pretty hard to see for a human player. Okay. Yeah. So white was, um, White was going to get to, to attack the, the left side or surround black on the right. So now black has to do something about that group. If black leaves it, white can probably... Um, let's see if I can find the best move. I, I think it's probably just best to peep here. And this is going to be trouble for black. We can give this exchange to black. So white has, black has an eye in the center, but won't be able to make an eye here. So that, that's just dead. Um, so black has to add a stone to that. And if white covers on the second line, black will probably add one more stone to that group. Black has to add another stone to that group, that is. That's interesting. Chris Davis says he saw a broadcast in an old Japanese Go tournament before AI, and they had a similar white-black winning percentage scale, which was set by hand. So basically it was the commentator who was sort of judging that. Um, I remember there was a time on TV, so it was a lightning tournament on TV, 
uh, where there was a commentator and then actually I was standing on the side and I was giving point values for every uh, area. So so basically territories. Uh, sometimes they weren't territories. Like, um, And the commentator could ask me to, to tally up the score. It was interesting when I did that with uh, Kajiwara Takeo, who was a famous commentator. He was a famous Go player also. But he was famous for his commentaries in which he coined some crazy phrases which were sort of amusing in Japanese and he asked me about four game four moves into the game to to give a territorial judgment so I had to figure out what the start how many points the star point had and stuff like that it made it difficult for me so that's the one game in that tournament that I, I actually have a vivid memory of when I had to calculate the scores of the territories when there are hardly any stones on the board. Okay, so this Kosumi um, is a kind of a multi-purpose move with which White is extending his liberties. So um, that will be significant, for instance, it would have been significant if black had gone into this kind of uh, this let's just do um this kind of variation and had been doing stuff like this you can see black will it will be getting some kind of a squeeze so although it's not forcing so black does have that potential there so there's that kind of thing it doesn't make so much difference when black goes this route because there's not so much of a shortage of liberties um so there's that uh, that significance. Um, obviously, white is thinking of moving into the black territory at some point with something like this. So there's the reduction of black's territory. And also there's the fact that um, in a variation like this, white's going to be setting up a, an attack against black in the center of the board. So um, although black gets something like 10 more points, if we count from my my estimate that I gave before, Black has added on 10 points to the Black territory, Black is getting isolated in the center of the board. So sometimes White can set up, White probably wouldn't do anything that was like this that is Gote, but White would have potential to set up an attack there in the center. Oh, so this is the way the game is. So let's see if White actually curls around. The other move would be maybe to cut here. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with this one, but and this would be the other possibility. Oh, he curled around. So um, White's playing in a very straightforward fashion. And again, I think that's kind of a signif it signifies that Shinjinso is feeling okay about this game. When White pushes it to, Black does have to answer somehow uh, because this would be very, um, this would start to be painful. So this kind of thing could happen. It looks like Black's corner is going to fall apart. Um, so even if White just connects here, Let's see how to handle this. Um, white can probably play this way. It just looks bad for black. So let's see. It's four liberties. And white can probably even win the semi. So in a shape like this, we're going to ignore the fact that black at some point could have played a clamp here. But yeah, just to simplify things. This semi looks like it's going to be good for white. White wins by one move. So if black extends here, so black now is, is posed a bit. He's thinking about extending or connecting on the third line. So black has a choice there. Because if black extends, it means he has to extend once more. And when black connects on the third line, uh, that means white has no more forcing moves. <clears throat> So, Hayai Kare wa uh, asking about yesterday's game. No, uh, no one won it because they um, they had to call their null, null game. They, they couldn't. Uh, Mewton ran out of time, but it turned out to be a malfunction of the computer. So they had to replay the game. Okay, this is a forcing move on the right side. And I still have a feeling that muting, I mean, 
Shinjin, so it's winning here, but it's probably very close. And so I'm going to learn something from watching how he wraps it up because it's always very, it's not easy to wrap up these games. It's always more difficult than you expect. So this is going to be forcing. Um, so let's say black and black has a number of ways to live. Black could add a stone here, but maybe here. Um, that's alive too. The, the problem that black has to solve here is the peep here. So if black plays away, white's going to peep here. And if white can save this zone, the black group has only the one eye here. So that's the problem black has to solve. And so black can solve it by playing here, after which black can capture that stone. So clamping here is a lesser problem with which black can, um, could probably just sacrifice the one stone would probably be the best way to handle it. And black has plenty of eyes. So in this case, black would be alive already. So yes, that was the game move. So now um, they've pretty much established the side positions. And there's the question of what's going to happen in the center of the board. So that's the big question here. It looks like white has some potential to attack those black stones floating about in the center. But let's take a look at the territory again. I'd say this black uh, territory in the upper left here is uh, the black territory in the upper left is probably close to 25 points. But if we call it a position like uh, none of these moves are 100% forcing, but if we assume it's something like this, then it would be this territory and uh, this kind of territory if we just count it this way. That's 23 points. So it's somewhat less than 25 points. And there's also the potential that maybe white's going to be playing from this side in combination with some kind of attack against the center. So like, for, for instance, something like this would be attempting to attack the black stones in the center of the board on a large scale. So let's say that the black territory in the upper left, for the time being, it's something like 23 points. Black has something like five points in the upper right corner. Black has, I'll call it 17 points in the lower left corner. So that's uh, the lower left and the upper left add up to be somewhat close to 40 points, 45 points. And uh, black has just captured a stone there. So those various points will add up to about five more points to make something like 50 points for black. So that's 50 points. That's going to be easy to remember. I'll call white's territory on the left for the time being 15 points. If white adds a move to it, it's going to be more than 20 points. So that's an area that is still sort of fluid there. I'll call it 15 points. If black plays first, it's going to be more like 10 points. So I'll call it 15 points for the time being. White has something like 10 points on the top. Less than 10 points on the lower side. That's 35. And about 10 points in the corner, 45. So yes. So the territory is close, and white seems to have some potential to attack. In this sequence... White is probably looking at the potential attack on this side. So now White's looking at attacking this black group in the lower right area. So there are various black groups that Black will have to sort of deal with in the following sequence. There is some kind of hidden potential for White to be attacking here. Yes. Yes. So that was Go Dave 89 uh, sort of catching on to the same thing that I was talking about. Uh, saying White's aiming at I-15, yes. Playing at G-12, G-12, G-12. G12, uh, there's a double peep related to that. So that's sort of interesting. Let's just back up. Oh, we don't have to back up. Okay. A move here is sort of looking at a double peep there. Um, so this would be slightly annoying. So if black connects this stone, 
Uh, now white has to deal with the problem in the center. So white might uh, g12 is a is a is a move. It's a move that could be played at some point. Okay. Okay, so James Sedgwick is telling us that white seems to have lost some of some percentage points when black captured this stone. And I, I was so, sort of expecting white to pull it out, um, but I didn't know what was going to happen. So that, that could um, sort of link up to that comment that we're getting from uh, James Sedgwick is giving us that comment from Fine Art, I believe. So uh, that could be what's happening here. 15% is significant, but it's easy enough for humans to sort of miss that when they're playing. Um, <laughs> Dansu Baduk Uruguay is saying, don't you find these tournaments boring when the players are not in the same room or sometimes in the same without seeing each other? And he can't imagine Sakata or Fujisawa doing misclicks or disconnecting and stuff. Obviously, yes. Um, I'd say that the players of that era, about, um, 50 years ago, they were a bit more wild than the players nowadays. So players nowadays don't get upset with each other or, um, th there's a lot of, uh, things that happened in those days that were basically, um, people having confrontations because of, um, characters being different. But it doesn't happen nowadays. They're much calm. It's just the way people people are nowadays, I think. Okay, so another problem is that eventually white will have to deal with the potential cut here. So if black uh, continues somewhere on the right side, eventually white will have to link up there. So that would be a kind of a... Uh, it's a move that doesn't have many much territory attached to it, so it's a kind of a painful move that White will eventually have to play. <laughs> Indeed. I like the comment by Rick Rubenstein that Shuko was famous for blundering, so yeah, he he could probably misclick if given the chance. Um... More likely, he just refused to play on the computer. Oh, yes. Arthur is saying Miyuting has played, been putting a, a good showing in these two games. Um, Shinjin So's games lately have looked like smooth victories for him, and both of these games have been very close. Um, actually, in um, sort of in preparation for this tournament, I was studying Miyuting's games because he's been playing very. Um, promising games. He's the quality of his playing has been very good in the last few weeks, I believe. Um, and so I was interest interested to see how well he would do. Um, I think he's one of the players um, who has a real chance of beating Xin Jing So. And yesterday he was well on the way to doing that until he messed up in the middle game, and. Um, when the the accident with the mouse not working happened, it was already a very close game. It wasn't very wasn't necessarily good for him at that point, but there was a point in the game when when he was clearly seeming to win. And so, yes, I would say that um, he's in very good form now, and um, he did he he does have a. I think even in this game, which is, it looks like it's going to be close again. He has a real chance to defeat Xin Jin So, one of the few people in the world who does. Okay, so, um, so Black had close to 50 points. And white has more than 40 points. So it's, it's with the Comey being six and a half, it's 
if it's sort of close. Um, and the center position, it's not clear. It's not clear to me how this is going to turn out because black does have the beginnings of eyes on the right here. So like, for instance, if we imagine that at some point black is going to play, um, moves like this and is forcing moves. It's not forcing right now, but if it does become forcing, you can see black sort of building a little territory here. Um, probably close enough to a living shape for black. So, um, it's not clear how white is going to use that in an attack. White does have to eventually be taking, there are many cases where white will have to deal with this by making a connection here. Uh, but why would like to be trying to uh, avoid that also? And there's this huge move on the left side. There's this huge move here, which is um, it's so important. It's something like it's a 15 point move. Uh, if even if we just compare it with if we just compare it with black playing here, so it's a big move that is worth thinking of playing fairly soon. But they, they, White wants to accomplish something in the center of the board probably first. But um, it's a, it's such a big move that it's going to change the calculation of territory um, very much. White does have potential to cut the four black stones in the center, as Rick Rubenstein is asking. Um, but when we have that move on the left side that's worth something like 15 points, uh, I think the real question is how large a scale can white capture those four stones? So like just capturing them on a small scale uh, with moves like this, maybe that's just about 10 points if, if that's where it stops. So in this case, um, it would be comparable to the size of this move, maybe not so satisfying. Okay, they both, um, they're pretty even in the time then. Godev has just given us the uh, the time with me having 20 minutes and Shinjin so 27. Black N2. N2, N2, there could be something with N2. Um, but no, black's gonna lose the race to capture usually. Okay, so let's let's try that out. So let's see, and two, and here, and if black plays this one, it's not going to work. So this this way, black loses the race to capture by one move. And white has one extra liberty there, but black black can cut. So this this ah oh, sorry, black can cut, and this would work to a certain degree, uh, because if white plays this way, then black can um, cut off the white stones. So this could potentially um, work in an attack against white on the right side. Um, Tetsi, huh? Tetsi 1982. They're slowing down now. Um, it is a kind of a crucial part of the game where... Um, if they had a lot of time, they would be able to um, work it out to a certain degree. There's a lot of moves left. Um, there are only about 130 moves into the game. I think this is move number 127 that was just played. Um, so they have more than 100 moves left over. And for, for games where they have a lot of time, that would be sort of borderline uh, between a game that they could not calculate and maybe they could calculate it. So I, I've known of some, some top players 
to calculate fairly accurately um, the last hundred moves of the game. They hardly make any mistakes, provided they have enough time. Um, so, because of that, a mistake at this stage of the game could be could be fatal. And and whereas in earlier in the game, maybe they feel that they can play the moves that feel right and be close enough to correct to, to be happy about it. So there is a thing about the moves at this point of the game that make them make it a point where you have to make your final decisions. And after that, it becomes something that they can finish off without really worrying about the whole board. Like the local endgame moves, they're probably not going to make any big mistakes there. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Counting TLS is uh, talking about Miu Ting again. And he did... Um, he popularized the flying knife, Joseki, which is a, a very complicated variation of the through tree invasion to a star point. And it was one of his favorite moves. He, he does love to make the game complicated sometimes. He's a fighting player. So now the left side is um, it's fairly close to 25 points. It's maybe uh, slightly less than that. Um, and the lower right corner is it's still close to 10 points, maybe a little less than that. White has about um, about almost 10 points on the lower side. So let's see. So that adds up to something close to 40 points, plus the upper side. And there's that issue with Black's peep at, um, at was that N2? Yes. Which could be um, something happening on the upper side. So we'll see if they do that. So that was uh, 25, 35, 40, 40. Something around 40 points for white. So black has 40 points just with the upper left and the lower left corners. So yes, it's looking a little better for black than it was before. Yes, when it's close, you see the score fluctuate more. Um, and that's because the AI probably knows what it's doing. So when it's a, an end game and it's a close game, then the score will fluctuate because the players make mistakes. Uh, when it's some huge race to capture or something, sometimes the score fluctuates a bit because um, our neural network programs they, they need a lot of resources to calculate correctly with um, full board semi-like positions. So actually that's that's a position where like on a local system, on a, on a PC for instance, uh, sometimes you don't have enough power to, to have the um, neural network giving you correct answers when it's some huge semi-complicated fight involving the whole board. Um, but when you have an end game, which is relatively peaceful, you might say, then sometimes, th then usually the, the percentages that the computer gives are more accurate and they, the computer, uh, neural networks tend to have, um, a fairly good idea. Okay. Uh, Tetsi1982 is saying hundred moves sounds ridiculous. Um, actually when I was, um, it was probably only 10, 20 years ago, about 10, 10 years ago, I guess. I, I decided my end game wasn't very good. And I, I started studying end games, just giving myself a diagram with the, um, I actually started with the final 30 moves, which is generally just one and two point moves as we call them. And that was easy enough, but I, I made myself, um, create I tried to make an image in my mind of the board and play all the moves out inside my mind, which was the challenging part, and read out correctly. So so there, I got to a point where I could do that with 30 moves, and I studied with 50 moves and 70 moves. And I found that 100 moves was probably a bit too challenging. Uh, but I also, in the process of this, I was setting some of the games played by the top players in the world and I had the feeling that they were pretty close to 
reading out those moves when they had a lot of time on hand. Without time, obviously, they don't do that. Okay, so this is the move that was suggested before. And so, yes. So, uh, it's close, and black is, this move is going to potentially lose some territory. And it's also potentially going to be a ko. So, we're going to see how that turns out. So, there's various potential things that I'm talking about here. This one is the one that doesn't work for black. This is already a loss for black, so black's not going to do that. Black's going to play this one. And here. So it's forced up to that point. Now if white plays here, in this sequence black has lost some territory, but is getting a potential attack against white on the right side. So if black can pull off that attack, then this is going to be, maybe it's going to be a win for black. So black would continue maybe with something like this. Hmm. So um, otherwise, if white doesn't like this variation, white might play a ko like this. In which case, black is going to be losing territory quite seriously. So, so I don't know where white's co threat will be. Um, white does have some local co threats, and black doesn't have any co threats. Well, black has a co threat here. Maybe this is going to be forcing. No, that's not forcing. White would probably have to play this way. So let's do it this way. And this way. And in this variation, white does have some local co-threats. So black has a co-threat here. Uh, maybe here. That's just, uh, I'll try to figure this out on my own just, just for now. Okay, that wasn't forcing anymore. Maybe black had to do that in a different... I was big enough, maybe. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's go back and... Uh, yeah, do it. This It's probably forcing. So it seems conceivable that white's going to run out of co-threats here. Which would be bad for white. So yeah, so it is a, a close co there. Um, in this variation, white was short of one co thread. And it's probably not very good for white. So let's see what they did with the game. Okay, white started from the corner. So white's playing here. Um, and black sacrificed the one stone. That makes some sense. And the corner group is, it's already alive. So if white plays here, Oh yes, that black does need to add a stone, but could probably do it with this one, and then here. That's alive. Or if white plays here, again, it's it's alive. But black would probably play this move and connect. Oh, straight down. That's better for territory. I see. Not a threat against black, but black, in any case, black is probably going to um, play this sequence. So in, in this case, this gives white slightly more territory on the right and gives white an eye there, which was the idea. So that was, uh, it's a nice endgame tesuji to learn from.
Yes. Um, well, talking about AIs and end games, as some people here are. Um, it's sort of difficult to learn end games from an AI because they tend to. Um, it really depends a lot on how you set up the computer, but in there's a very strong tendency for them to throw away points. So, so we were seeing that with AlphaGo, and we see it with most of the computer programs that we use nowadays. And I'm sure a computer mechanic could tweak that a little bit, but it's still it's, it's sort of annoying, and it's it's uh, I find it difficult a difficult thing to fix. And so. They throw away points because um, they've they've found a winning per, winning variation. So um, when I try to improve my end game, I would be looking for what I would call um, ideally I would be looking for a perfect variation where um, both players play the best moves and we get a, what I would call a correct answer for how, who wins by how many points and um that's not one of the parameters it's not it's not something that it's not an issue with these computer programs um either they're going to win or they're going to lose it doesn't matter whether it's half point or 100 points it doesn't matter at all and so it's very difficult to get them to play a correct sequence but they're very good at estimating the score um because in the end game there's so many various you can play any one of the two point moves and they you get usually get the same result so there's a number of ways to get to a correct answer but it's very sometimes it's difficult to get the computer to actually play it for you okay so black is cut here um just just to remind you that black is not gaining any territory with all this stuff that black's doing so Black is basically t playing dame points here, and it's dangerous in that way because um, if this attack fails, then he's gonna it's the territorial loss is gonna be pretty serious. So when I see Black playing this move, the first thing that I worry about for Black is what if White plays here? So this would be threatening to capture three Black stones, and if we say Black saves them the black group in the corner is going to die. So uh, that's going to be bad. We, we don't even have the cut here because it's a, a net. So black is probably going to counter with this and, and the capture on the upper side. So this would capture five white stones on the upper side. So to start with, we have to think about this trade. We also have to think about the possibility of white playing here and then capturing these stones. So so this way white would be able to capture at the very least this stone. White might even try something a bit more tricky uh, like this. This might even be better. And black plays here and then white plays here. And white gets some extra stones this way. I don't think black's going to be able to kill white on the right side here. So I'm sort of worried about this attack that Black is playing. Okay. Maybe Xin Xin Su can hear me too. It's good. I, I'm happy when they play the moves that I wanted to play. So uh, let's say Black ignores that and tries to kill White here. This this could be the plan. So like if we just say it's something like this. This doesn't look like something I would do if I thought I was winning. So, it, it's not going to be easy. So, like, if white has a forcing move here and, and moves like this, um, for instance, this, is, this was an easy win for white. I I don't feel very happy about this for black. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm just not feeling happy for black. So I, I don't see why he wants to get into this variation. But, you know, Miyu Ting likes this kind of thing.
And maybe he was slightly behind in territory. Um, I, I couldn't judge that myself. It's, it's a, it, that would be a hard call. The territory looked really close to me. Cloudin79 is asking, do players have to be careful of how they play depending on the rule set, like Chinese versus Japanese rules? Rule differences are small that it's not worth factoring into your play. Um, that's an interesting question. It's sort of... Um, sometimes it's hard to say. Rule sets do make a real difference. B basically, it's just the... The fact that the komi is different is the biggest difference. So in Japanese and Korean tournaments, generally the domestic tournaments are all six and a half points. Um, so when you have six and a half points, that's a, a huge difference between that and seven and a half points. It's a, it makes a difference in a close game. And there's also the fact that with the tri Chinese rule system, there is a, a small advantage for black, which has to do with um black sometimes playing an extra stone on the board which gives black an extra uh some extra value so there's um a slight difference there which makes the white player playing um want to play a bit more actively so there's a uh, and also with seki that's an unusual case though um manuel velasco is talking about the bent four with the seki all, all sekis a lot of sekis that i should say um they share the dames so uh in some cases they don't make a big difference but sometimes um you have a kind of a false eye inside of a seki or stuff like that sometimes there's one side who can fill more dames inside the seki and the bent four in the corner is a shape that the japanese say it's just dead and and with the chinese rule you have to play it out and that also interacts with positions like sekis that cannot be taken out of, off the board, cannot be resolved before you play the ko. So there's some tricky, very unusual things that can happen that will make a difference. Covering here, it's not going to change the fact that white can potentially kill that black group. So the white can actually answer it on the right side. Gabriel Fernandez is asking, what's this software name? I'm actually showing you the game from a server. So this is directly taken from the server. Um, I think it's called Cyber on the, on the West, in the West, but it's not the server that they're playing the game on. I think they're playing it on a different server. Um, and it's called Yugen no Ma in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Benkyo361. Benkyo361 was um, pretty much doing the commentary for me in, in Twitch. That's good. So locally, White has to answer that. And I think that the reason he's posing a little bit here is because, let's just uh, give some potential. If White plays here, compared to this way, it's one point less for White. Um... But it gives white more liberty. So if we count the liberties, white has uh, two liberties in the center. If, and if we just count it like this, white has two liberties there on the um, top side of the white's group and has two liberties on the first line. And then, of course, the other four liberties on the outside. So if white plays instead this way and we have a position like this, now white has less liberties than that. So it looks like for the time being, white has about six liberties. If we uh, if we say black has to add a stone there, uh, in some cases it could be it could cost one one more move for black to to fill that liberty there. Uh, black might sometimes have to have to play this move first, but there is a slight difference in the number of liberties for the white group. 
So as far as territories is concerned, oh, he chose this one. Uh, he chose this one. So he, he chose to take the extra point there uh, while connecting here would have given him one extra liberty. So that was a, he was sort of pausing just to make sure. I would say he's making sure that this white group is going to be okay anyway. Because in order to justify what black is doing in, in a fight, something like this, black needs to be able to, I mean, white might even do it this way. I don't know. But black needs to be able to kill this white group on the, on the right. Otherwise, I think playing here and allowing white to do something like this, um, it seems to be white who's getting all the territory moves and black's not really gaining very much. So I'm, I'm thinking that black has to be more aggressive and I don't really know how he's going to handle this and the counterattack. Going back to this move that white has already played here, but if white was really worried about being killed on the right side, another way he could have done it would be to play here, which is still forcing against the black group because if black plays here and white plays here, Again, white is going to be able to kill black in the corner uh, after connecting here, of course. Um, and in this case, white would have some potential to make one more eye on the side with, uh, in this case, black's shape would be more, more liable to be falling apart. So it would be starting to look a bit dangerous for black. White would probably stop at some point and, and escape towards the same. But it, it looks a bit da dangerous for black. Okay, I figured it out now. White's going to play this way. And this is even better. So yeah, this, this is just going to fall apart. So playing at one would be a super safe move as far as eyes are concerned. But it would be losing another point. So losing points is important too. So white played the most territorially profitable move. And black will have to do something here if black doesn't want those three stones to be cap captured. So if black plays, if black plays on this side, it's not working because white can play here, and it's a double threat. So black eventually would have to play here and allow white to capture. Um, black could leave it for the, um, with something like this or this this kind of move, and white's not going to go after the three stones in this case, or is he? Oh, he can. Sorry about that. I was I was wrong. He can go after the three stones. So black does have to fix the shape. Black has to fix the shape uh, by playing one of those moves. So it would be uh, this would work too, but white would have more freedom in how white answers that. So probably here. And is black going to go after the white group? It looks very dangerous for black. Yes. It looks like uh, counting TLS is asking, answering a question. Uh, it usually depends on who sponsors and organizes the tournament. And he must be talking about uh, the rule sets still. So yes, um, it generally depends on what country a certain or, um, the sponsor is based in. And they will usually use the rule set of their own country. Which makes sense. Like it's, um, if 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 you have a sponsor, the sponsor has something to say about what rule set you play with. Uh, you and and there's another rule set, the um the the ink cup rules, which was invented by um Mr. Ing who was a very wealthy man and he created this foundation to promote Go. Um, and he had his own set of rules, which was supposed to avoid any, um, any annulled uh, games that were caused by positions that could not be resolved. So he, he was trying to perfect the rule set and he had his own rule set, which was, um, it's, a, it's slightly cumbersome in the counting uh, process. Uh, but it 
was very difficult to to find any exceptions to the rule. So so pretty pretty solid in avoiding um, situations where there was no um, where you had to replay the game. But I don't think they had anything about misclicks or mouse malfunctions. Okay, so black is going to allow white to live there. I don't think this was on the whole a, a very good sequence for black. White's territory on the top side has not been reduced, and white's territory on the right side is more than it used to be. So because white is going to add a stone to it now, maybe on the second line. But white's going to add a stone there and it's going to be alive. So that territory was increased by a small degree. Black's territory in the upper right corner has not increased. It's probably it's probably smaller than it was before. And white seemed to gain a little bit on the top side. Although pulling back at uh, is it K K two that is still a big move. Um, white's going to answer it somewhere in the center of the board. So black is locally black has not gained anything. Black has lost points. Um, maybe black can make something in the center. The chat in Twitch is, is pretty lively today, so thank you. Black R1, um, that's, it's not any, um, Muneme Banuk, um, Black R1, not anymore. So actually white will play R1 at some point and force black to make two eyes. Okay, so now if uh, black covers on the second line, white will push through on the fourth line. And so it will be hard for black to try to continue there. So it's probably a live, sort of, it's going to stand like it is. So um, a minimum of about six points, maybe a bit more. Big moves on the side. Okay, black's playing in the center for the time being. Big moves on the side. The only big move on the side is K2. So that's a big move. Mm -hmm. And against this, white can play away, or white doesn't really want to play uh, answer it on the first line, or white can play something in the center. Oh, yes. Jack, we're talking about the Ing Cup rules. There was a tournament where the professional Ing Cup, where they um, would allow you to exchange points for, for more time. And uh, it's probably a bad idea. The points are more important. But if you, in, in that tournament, there was no overtime. So if you ran out of time, you had to buy time with your points. Hmm. It looks like it's going to be very close. Can white play e2? 
E2, no. No, that wouldn't work. Yes, so white here is probably going to play this and a and Hane on top. So this was a move I was thinking of uh, showing you. If white plays here and black plays like this, white can uh, capture on the top side. So that's not working for black. Or if black plays here, this is probably functioning for white fairly well. Um, the right side, connecting to the right and taking two eyes, that's me eye. So if black plays this way, white can live with this. And white's gaining some points towards the upper side. So this is sort of working for white. Yes. Okay, there's a, a character, Ko. Looks like Ko. Um, do you ever study Korean players? Obviously, I study Shin Jin So. He's my favorite player. Um, basically, because he's so strong. So I, I think I learned a lot from studying Shin Jin So's games. Um, I found he said all hard to learn from. And, um, I, I studied him a little, of course, but he was more difficult to learn from. Uh, same with Yi Chang Ho. I found him difficult to learn anything from. Uh, somehow I found, uh, Shin Jin So very easy to understand comparably. And Shin Min Jun also. So, and, and the parks, the two park Parks. There's two players called Park. They're, I like them too, also. So those are the four Korean players I probably say the most. Um, Chinese players. Mm, KJ, I guess. Um, recently I've been studying Miu Ting just because he's in good form recently. And Chinese players change a lot. They, they have a lot of young players who come up very quickly. And so you have to... Um, you have to keep looking at new players because the new players are very, they have very um, strong young players coming up all the time. It's very difficult to stay afloat in China for the top players. Also, Shin Jin So is he's very, um, very learned in AI tactics. So, so tactics that people study with computers. Um, he's very deeply studied them. So he's made them something that he's sort of digested into something that he can actually use, even if his opponent plays a different move, which is very important because humans will not always play the moves that the computer suggests. So. You have to study them more deeply than the computer is just showing you a variation. You have to you have to figure out, you have to understand the move itself instead of just memorizing it, so that you will know what you want to do when your opponent is playing something. This and it's the same as Joseki's for most amateur players, for most players. In, in fact, you have to understand the meaning of the Joseki. Memorizing it is not going to help you when your opponent plays some some different move. Ah, Telegraph Go knows that I played a game with Li Chang Ho. Um, I had a great idea in the opening. And um, it was valid apart from the fact that I I played the wrong move, move order. It was hopeless after that. So I guess I learned something. Yes, Black will be trying to make territory in the center, but uh, this sequence here... Um, he had to start with K2 because that was such a huge move. And with this sequence, white is sort of dealing with it. So, for instance, if white plays a move that will connect up in the center, how white does that is, like I was suggesting this move. Otherwise, white could play here. And this is pretty much connected up. So it's going to be difficult for black to cut it. And if black actually does try to cut it, black's going to be losing too many points in the process. And it doesn't actually kill white. So when you when you have a variation like this, um, and if black plays here or here, white's going to end up playing here. It it's just the one area 
it's not so much area that black has in the center. Like it's going to be something like a few points up to maybe about five points. It's not a huge area that black is going to get. So it's going to be small. Uh, of course, even a small area can make a difference, but it's not going to be very big. And the profit that white got on the right side is probably bigger than what black's going to end up surrounding in the center. So it's difficult for black to do it well. Hmm. Ikichin is asking me about Cho Hyunyun's. So that's, uh, in Japan, we would call him So Kungen. That's the Japanese pronunciation of his name, of the characters of his name. Uh, for a long time, he was the top player in Korea. Um, when he was young, he actually studied for a time in Japan also. And I think at the, when I was a very young player, um, I was more focused on the top Japanese players. So I was focused on players like Cho Chikun or um, Kato Ishida, I guess, um, Kobayashi Koichi, players like that. And before the internet, it was very difficult to get a lot of records for players who were not playing in Japan. So even Korean players, that's sort of next door if you look at a world map. It was, uh, before we had um, the internet, it was difficult to, relatively difficult and time consuming to get uh, game records. So, I, at that time, I wasn't following any foreign players. Okay, white simply lived there. So, that uh, does stop black from connecting on the first line. So, I guess there is some territory attached to that move. And now, yes, so, black... Again, it's hard to see how much black has gained here. Um, white does have a kind of a toehold towards the center. Um, and later on, when white plays... Um, uh, that was a sente move, so let's, let's find something that's not sente. When white plays something like this, um, it's troublesome again. So like, And then if white plays something like this, it looks like white's going to be able to Maybe white's going to capture some black stones in the center. So usually black would just sacrifice them like this. Um, if black plays something like this, it's going to be a bit more wild. Um, but again, you can see in this case, black's center would be falling apart. So there's some potential profit for white in the center here. So if we assume black's going to sacrifice those stones, that's another nine points that we can add to the white territory. If black plays on this side, it's probably going to get exciting if white does stuff like this, this would be bad for black because white could break into the black territory. So th this is potentially some trouble. Like this this is um, already at least a co. In this case, it's going to be a co of some kind. Or if black gets... This is going to be painful for black, however it turns out. So in this case, it would just be losing a lot of territory. That territory that I was calling... Uh, 25 points, it's going to be lower than 20 points. So white has stuff, white has some good stuff waiting to happen when white plays here, uh, that move. So there's actually some potential gain for white um, in that area that's, that's still established there. Getting J7 and Sente. J7 is, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Scoob is asking, uh, why do you think it's so hard to increase the popularity of going to the U.S.? Um, I don't know. I, I got the impression that there was a lot of enthusiasm, enthusiasm um, after AlphaGo. So uh, when AlphaGo played he said all there was a huge reaction. And I think it's a lot more popular than it used to be. And so my impression is that Go is moving forwards in the West in general. Um, so I, um, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I would say it's getting popular. 
Um, but having say, say, said that, it does have to, it's a, it's a game that you have to think about to, to really enjoy. You have to use your brain. And with all these um, gadgets we have that do our thinking for us, sometimes there's some people who find it bothering to have to think about stuff. So, so there's a lot of games that don't require so much cogitation that have become more popular. Right, yeah. Some people don't like to think. I say some people. Probably not the people who are watching a, a Go live stream, but some people don't. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I forget who it was, but someone was suggesting that move. So, yeah. So that's a hit. It, it does look at the double peep. Uh, the double peep in itself is already going to gain something like two or three points. So so even if black just leaves that, um, this is going to be a forcing move. So even if black just leaves that, the white territory is already, even if white comes back and plays here, it's going to be two points difference. So compared to having a white stone at two and two white points at three and five, that's already a two point difference. Also, um, if black gets to connect there, there's a potential squeeze from the center. So something like this, uh, maybe, maybe like, uh, in this context, it wasn't quite working. So let's, let's do it this way. Uh, something like this. There's a potential squeeze from the center. So there's, it's, it's worth it for black. It's a big move pe peeping it too. Oh, he did. Where did white play? Oh, white played that move on the top side. I would have answered that. I, I, I don't, I really don't like black peeping here. I mean, I don't like it for white. Von Hannan, thank you very much. I got a present from Von Hannan. Keeps me going. Okay. Okay, this is something that I was talking about. Wow, so he didn't answer that. Um, it's going to be another five points or so. So like when black plays here, after this, usually white would have to answer it. So that's um, a, a significant difference in the size of white's territory there. So so it's um, maybe less than 10 points still, but it's pretty close to 10 points. So that's a huge move at this stage of the game. But there's this thing that I was talking about on the top side, which is probably going to be a co. So again, if black answers directly, this is getting lively again. So if black answers directly... Uh, this is probably just bad for black. It's cut off. Black doesn't want to allow that to happen. So black answered on this side. White's going to take once. And going straight down doesn't seem to work quite. So this is not going to be good enough for white. Connecting here. White gains a few points. Um, but eventually it's going to be this co here that, it, that's important. So um, maybe white's just going to start with this move. Uh, something like this. Or maybe the cut on this side. Um, and it's going to be a huge co if this happens. White stands to lose some points too. Uh, but for instance, white has a co threat here. Okay, looks like it could be an exciting ending for the game. Let's just watch and see what happens with this, uh, this co. And if white doesn't accomplish any, anything here, like there, there's two ways white can try to do it. White can try to gain, for instance, several points in a variation like this. This might be good enough even as it is. So like, like something like this, uh, white might not even play it to the end. Um, if we get something like this and white's going to lose the race to capture by one move and white could maybe get this one too then then it would be relatively small loss for white and and on the left side and a huge loss for black on the top so this black territory is already already looking like it's something down to something like 
17 points. So it's a huge decrease in the size of Black's territory. That's one way it can be tried. But the strongest move would be to, to aim for the ko here. So in this case, if Black answers on this side, if this side is ko, this side is going to be... This uh, semi-white uh, seems to have an advantage. Okay. Um, do ghost schools have any established protocols for in increasing the pupil's strength in the middle game outside of just experience? So that's Ko again asking that question. Um, I'd say that in Korea, they have systems. They have systems that are optimized, um, a lot of group study, and they have um, sort of school books almost. They, they, have, they, they have professional players who have organized systems to teach and they have they study in groups, which helps also. Uh, they seem to have some kind of a system, and I think they have something in China too, which is like that. In Japan, they they have a more traditional. They have some traditional ideas about how to teach, and it's not quite as systematic as that in a modern form. I'd, I'd say that the Japanese depend more on what you're calling experience. Atlas Systems, I, uh, you've been here before, haven't you not? Uh, you're late in the stream. What happened yesterday? It apparently was a computer malfunction that stopped the game. Because Miu Ting, um, as far as the server was concerned, he lost by time. But it was apparently that his um, computer did not respond to it, him clicking on the board. Okay, so White stopped midstream here decided to take to return to the left side. So white has already reduced black's territory by a few points. And so even if black answers here, if black answers at this point, uh, it looks like black's territory will be safe enough. Um, or black might might decide to answer like this. So um, there, there was actually a bit of an issue there. So if, if we say this happens, and this happens, it, it's still going to be in some cases, white's going to be able to reduce the black's territory. So let's, uh, just to simplify the, the story, let's say black plays something like this and it's like this. That's 24 points that black has left. So I think white did manage to reduce black's territory a little bit there and is satisfied with that. Instead, black takes the call. White's going to use the upper left corner, though, for co threats. With all those uh, co threats, potential co threats in the upper left, uh, for the time being, white seems to have an advantage in this local co. So uh, these two black territories on the left side of the board, the lower left black corner and the upper left black corner with that side territory attached to it, they probably add up, still add up to something close to 40 points. But it's really difficult to calculate the rest of Black's territory. So Black has four or five points in the upper right corner, and then some stuff in the center, which is hard to define. So we'll stop it. Um, we'll say Black has about 45 points, plus some potential in the center. So White has um, about 20 points on the left side. It's, it's sort of it's fluid because connecting there is a big move still. So if white connects, there's 23 points. And if black connects, there's slightly less than 20 points. So let's call it 20 points. White has, I'll, I'll call that six points on the right side. About um, less than 10 points in the lower right corner. It's 15, 35, and five points on the top. So that's 40. And then eight points 
I'll call that eight points. It's sort of, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but let's call it seven points. So let's, what was that? That's uh, 20, 35, 40, 48. So less than 50 points for white. Okay, this is a tricky move. But I think white can probably answer it with R19. So this is this is sort of tricky. Um, it's a question of whether white's going to answer it at R19 and try to gain some territory or play it safe with R15. So I said white has close to 50 points. Did I really? Uh, I said that, didn't I? Yeah, so I, and then black has 40 point, 45 points plus the center. So black has to get about 10 points to have a close game. And we haven't counted the potential cut here at, uh, what is that, H? No, it's um, I, I7 here. So that's a, um, it's almost a 10 point move in some cases. And the fact that this is still a call. So um, if white plays here and here, and black decides to connect on the right side, it is going to be somewhat painful because in this variation, black territory has been reduced to about 18 points. And before I was count counting it as something like 24 points. So that's a six point redu reduction with scented. It's big. Yes. Okay. Probably not so much difference in the territory, though. In some cases, this exchange would be a small gain for black. But when the right side is not defined yet, it's probably not. If that whole area was a white territory, it would be a gain for black. But otherwise... White still has some cold threats towards the upper left corner, so it's actually worthwhile for white to be playing uh, moves like... White has a number of ways to do it, but white uh, might be just playing all of these moves as cold threats. Again, black can play here and avoid the issue, um, but it will lose some... It will lose some points when this is... When it's sente. If black leaves it, White can eventually win this race to capture because black has to back off once and white wins by one move. So white's, I would probably continue playing co threats in the upper left corner. White does have co threats in the upper right also. So this, this point would be a co threat. Uh, on the whole, I think that black's co threats are a bit more difficult to choose. Dumb is Murray on the white group. White cut there. With this, the co is still a big threat for black. Um, it's a question of whether white has enough co threats to make it actually happen. Because when white has a forcing move here, white really wants to force black to, to put a stone in there. Um, if, if black can um, force white to connect like this, then black has gained the move. So they're, that's what they're fighting for here. Uh, they're fighting to get the get sente, get the extra tempo. Okay. Now, of course, white does have the option of trying to destroy black by cutting at um, F2. But is he going to do that? He, he has to read it out. And uh, I'm sure that they're both in their overtime now, so he only has one minute. And he probably thinks he's winning the game. I, I, I get the impression that white seems to be winning the game although it's fairly close. Um, things seem to be going well for white. 
So is white going after go after that black group or not? I would I would answer in the lower right corner. Right. Uh, people are talking. Let's see. Um, Manuel Valesco is saying, talking about R12 um, combined with black Q9. And R12 or R11, I would probably answer um, immediately at, um, at P10. So White would probably just answer that. Okay, White took the extra point in the corner. So that's the case where it's a, a fraction of a point difference, but it's slightly better for White to take that point um, at S18 when compared to Black taking that point. Scoob says that the stream AI has white at 98, 96%. Um, but at this stage of the game, it can be very close, even if the computer gives more than 90%. The closer you get to the end of the game, the more confident your computer program will become. Okay, this is a slightly ambiguous code threat, but it's it's threatening to capture uh, those black stones in the local position. Remy Campagni is asking about uh, O11 or L10. Oh, L10 is a safe move that White could play at some point. So L10 is this point. Um, this is a shape point, a shape move. It, it, if Black tries to connect like this, it is a very awkward shape. So this is a shape move. It's something that, especially after White has played the game move, and for instance, okay, so in, in a position like this, um, playing here would be a move that looks like it's going to be connected up. So it's something that white could do at some point with a potential attack on the right. But white takes the three stones. It looks like he's satisfied with the position. Black did get some points back, so locally black can play... Black would probably um, add a stone here, and white could play here to save the three stones. Um, But black does get some extra profit there. And the black territory on the top, it's more like 25 points now, 25, 26 points. <laughs> white's territory on the left side is being reduced by a point because eventually white's going to have to put a stone in here to stop the snapback. So that was cutting white off there. There's some meaning to it. And so it's actually not only the one point that white gets to play, uh, but... Eventually, black will be able to play a one-point move, forcing that. So it's a two-point difference there, because black cut white off. Okay, cut, and here. So if black extends... Oh, what's he going to... Maybe he's going to play here. That didn't work so well for white. This is conceivable. Wow, that's a pretty desperate move there. So again, black can use the snapback threat. So if, if black plays here and white plays here, this is going to be a snapback. So white doesn't want to do it that way. Um, so white has to back off.
and black cannot just simply connect up. So in order to make this work, black has to play this way. And it's going to, this call, it looks a bit desperate for black. And, um, where are the co threats? I don't know. This is this is going to be a call. It's... Yes. Well, in recent years, just because of oh, white pulled out, so there was that move too. So in the center here. If black plays an Atari here, black will be able to capture the three stones. Uh, but white's trying to capture this black group in the lower right. And apparently that's, yeah, that obviously that is bigger. So in this case, white would um, add a stone to it. Maybe here. And that's about 30 points in the lower right corner. So that's big. So, if black plays a net, what is the plan? Is white going to cut it off like this? It doesn't really look like a, a kill, though. So it's a bit confusing. Oh, black played the diagonal. And white saved the two stones. Mm -hmm. Black has to connect. Okay, white's... Wow. So white's going to play into the snapback. So if black, had, if black plays here and white plays here, it's a snapback, which is obviously bad. <coughs> Excuse me. So white's going to capture the one stone. Black's going to capture three stones here. And white's going to capture the whole black group. So this is... This is how white is refuting, refuting black's, <clears throat> black's plan here. Excuse me. No, that didn't work. Let's make it this move. <clears throat> I'm not sure about that one either. Wait a second. Yeah, I guess it's okay with this one. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, that was a um, time-saving move. Um, if black has to back off here, this is going to be very, very painful. So this is just clearly a loss for black. Uh, black has lost points locally. <clears throat> black has lost points all over the place. So this is just terrible. In order to um, compete with white, black has to play this way. And white plays here. Uh, no, this way. Okay. Okay, they, they are into this variation. So let's just watch the game. And it looks like the black group is going to be captured. Yes. So we're coming to a climax here. <clears throat> Maybe another co, but that co, yeah, it's not. It's just not working for black. Whatever white does, white can just push through. Or yes, white can play here. Black does have something with the wedge. Yes. But it's not only a co. <clears throat> but it's um. There's a lot of collateral damage on the right side. Black's probably going to lose the group on the right side too. So we're probably heading to a resignation by Miyuting. So just to show a diagram here, if white plays here and black plays here and white takes, then black can capture these two stones. So in order to avoid that, white will play here, an Atari threatening to cut and capture here. And black is just dead. So, um, black will connect. 
white will connect, black will play here, white will play here, and white has to connect once more. So black actually escapes with this call, uh, but this right side is dead, and that's going to be good enough for white. So back to the game. Uh, they're up to this point. What happened? Instead of cutting on underneath, white cut on the outside, but it's going to have the same result with white capturing the right side. So the right side is dead. Looks like that's it. There's no way that black group is going to make two eyes. So I think that muting is just setting up to resign fairly soon. So, if uh, Xin Jin so finishes winning this game, it will be um, a Japanese player next. Um, and they get to choose, but I, I think it's uh, Yo, uh, Yoseki. Yoseki, um, his, his name has a Chinese pronunciation also, but um, I know him by his Japanese pronunciation, so he's Yoseki for me. Um, he's, he's in good form. So, um, it'll be interesting to see him play. And there's also, of course, the Jap Japanese player. The other Japanese player is Ichiriki. So, we're going to have a Japanese player next. Okay, White has won by resignation. So, that's it for this game. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure which Japanese player is going to come. Um, I think it's going to be uh, Yoseki, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I won't be doing it tomorrow. I'll... Try to catch her, catch one of the later games this week. So um, I'm taking a day off tomorrow. But I'll probably see you sometime later this week. Yes, and Chris Davis was just asking me that. Um, so uh, Leonardo, I was saying Yoseki. It's Y-O and Seiki. But again, he's from Taipei, so he, he has a Chinese name too. Um, without Hippocampus. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for your support. And so tomorrow it's going to be Japanese player and then the day after Chinese player. I don't know how this um, extra game was going to affect the schedule because they originally were not planning to um, play a sixth game in this set of games. They were going to play a maximum of five games in this round. Depending how it turns out, we might see it's quite likely that we'll see all of the games. So thank you for staying here for throughout the uh, the live stream. And I will try to cover one of the following games. Uh, but I can't promise anything. I don't really know what the schedule is going to be like. So I'll be posting that in at my channel. So if, if you sign up to my channel and ask for... Hit the bell to get notifications. So I'm talking about my channel on YouTube. Um, and in Twitch, I will be, as, as soon as I know, I will be um, setting up the live stream. So you will be able to see when it's scheduled, probably. Or you can follow me on Twitter. And on Twitter, I will be posting um, articles about what I'm planning to do. So that's my Twitter link. In case you want to see me tweeting. And I, I put out uh, some of life and death problems. Go puzzles um, twice a week right now. So so there's some stuff I do on Twitter. And of course, if you're interested in playing teaching games with me, you can go, go here and look at my page at Patreon. And so you can get monthly teaching games if you become a supporter on the $50 tier there. So thanks everyone, and I'm finished. I'll see you next time.